night. Alcohol puking blood and there was some brain too. <laughs> well, I better get moving. I think I'm supposed to be working today. I'd like to say the views are wonderful, but they're not. Ah, it's that devilish invention that reminds me I'm still alive every morning. Now that's what I call culture. Ah, just a sock. I think it was already there when I moved in. Ah, why on earth would I take a sock? Let's just leave it there. Ah, stupid arcade machine. That thing ruined my education, my love life, and my depth perception. Just a box full of junk. There's nothing useful in there. Mortimer! I'm off to work! Oh, man. Is that my hangover? Or is death knocking at my door again? Whoever you are, I just want you to know I have my father's gun and a scorching case Randall of Randall Hicks! Cut the shit and open the door! Mr. Marconi? Well, it sure made publishers clearing house. Open this door! Oh, whew. I'm so glad it's you. But please, don't ever do that again. God damn it, Hicks. Do what? Scare me like that. I nearly turned my Fruit of the Looms into a fudge factory. Damn, Cannelloni. Did you just call me Cannelloni? Oh, come on, listen. I've had a terrible night. I swear somebody was whispering in my ear over and over that I'm cursed. And I'm fairly certain I pissed in my closet again. Ugh. Do you know what day it is? Is it your retirement day? Oh, no. I feel like we were just getting to know each other. Very funny. Your rent takes. As usual, you're late. I don't see my money. Neither do I, Mr. Marconi. But come on, it's only a couple of days late. No big deal. You owe me three months. Oh. Well, there must have been some kind of problem with the paperwork. Damn bureaucracy. Let me talk to my financial advisor. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Ah, Hicks, you need a financial advisor like I need ballerina shoes. That's lame. Well, what about the time I tried to pay you in gold coins? Those were bottle caps painted gold. Took me three weeks to get the paint off my hands. Mr. Marconi, I've been meaning to talk to you, but I don't think you're going to like what I'm about to say. I'm sure I won't. I have the feeling we're growing apart. What are you talking about? I've met someone else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love you and all, but I just don't think this is gonna work out. What the hell? Please, don't say anything. It's better to end now before desire takes over. Just hold me for one last time. God damn it, just give me my damn money. I'm sick of you. Mr. Marconi, I have a problem. You were born with a problem. No, I wasn't. The thing is, my job's been getting me down lately. I'm being exploited, you know? There are always hundreds of orders that have to be delivered on their due date and in perfect condition. And do you know what the worst part is? I don't care. The customers. They're only worried about themselves. They never thank me or say, have a nice day. They treat me like dirt, you know? Like I have no feelings. They always say things like, the package is smashed. The package shouldn't drip. This is not the address you're looking for. Is it too much to ask that they just sign for their damn delivery and keep their smashed packages? Randall. Yes, Mr. Marconi? You work for the town's worst courier service, and you spend more time trying to think of ways to get out of work than you do actually working. Whoa, 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 Mr. Marconi, that's not entirely true. It is entirely true. Randall, you're like a son to me. You know what that means, don't you? That you're willing to support me until I find my way in the world? Oh my god! Are you gonna buy me my first car? Thanks, Daddy! Jesus H. Christ. Your parents must feel like schmucks for feeding you and cleaning your cage so long. Thank you, Mr. Marconi. You're like the father I always wanted. 
This year I'll make you a special card for Father's Day with macaroni and glitter. Oh, you wear me out, Hicks. You could learn something from that roommate of yours, Mortimer. Now there's a real hard worker. What are you talking about? The guy hasn't come out of his room for months. Mortimer is the perfect tenant. He keeps it down and never gives me any trouble. All you do is make my life miserable. Mr. Marconi, we already had this conversation, and I promised you, no more megaphone after 10 o'clock. And as far as I know, Mortimer doesn't even speak our language. Leave him alone. You should try and be more responsible, Hicks. Eh? Do something with your life, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. By the way, you said you'd give me back my megaphone. I want my money now. Now that you mention Mortimer, he's the one that should have paid. Oh. Oh, I just had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. I gave my half to Mortimer last week. That's enough, Hicks. Your roommate is a busy man, so leave him out of your lies. Go back in there and fix this. I'm not moving from here until you pay up. You know, Mr. Marconi, there's this rumor spreading that you've got so much money that you don't know what to do with it all. What? Do I look like a rich man to you, Hicks? Well, now that you mention it, you kind of look like you should be living in a garbage can. Very funny, Hicks. You know what? One call and I can have you turned into fish food. Nah, I'm not really fond of marine fauna. But if there's one thing that's clear, it's you're a wealthy man. So you won't even notice if I don't pay you this month either. Hicks. All right, Mr. Marconi. I'll see what I can do. Mortimer, could you slip your half of the rent under the door? Old Marconi was here. Now he's out in the hallway yelling, Red rum, red rum. <laughs> Mortimer, cut it out and give me the money or you're going to wake up tomorrow with my head in your bed. And you'll be next. Because when I tell him you've been writing Mrs. Marconi love letters, you're going down too, buddy. <laughs> I didn't get a single word of that. I think we made it clear with that. One growl means no, two growls means yes. You just made me want to break down the door and stomp on your head. Wait a second. Three growls now? Dude, we said two means yes, one means no. But three? What's that all about? Mortimer, I'll never understand this language of yours. Can we please go back to Klingon? <laughs> there just isn't enough room for all that trash. A hanger with personality. I think some of those pepperoni slices are reproducing themselves by mitosis. Ah, someone better clean it up. That's from our last Halloween party. I don't think dressing up in green and going on a quest to find the Triforce is going to be of any help. At least not for the moment. I'd love to have a fridge. One that works, I mean. No can do, amigo. There's some kind of crust around the door that makes it impossible to open. Behold the most important piece of furniture in the house. I'd be lost without it. How else would I enjoy the movies I downloaded? Thank God for unlocked Wi-Fi networks. The TV remote. see the street from here. Lots of stuff, but 
nothing useful. I should have never taken that green herb from the mansion. I don't need it. My life gauge is full. That's the broom we use to switch the channels. I don't think it's ever been used for sweeping. That's the broom. Some leftovers from yesterday's sandwich. I used those to wrap up my sandwich yesterday. All right, thanks, Matt. Now I have some cash. Oh, and your wedding ring. This ring. There's something weird about it. A pittance. A hanger with personality. Wow, look at that. And I still have some wire left. A length of wire from the duck hanger. Ooh, the fire escape, huh? Yeah, good idea. I like that metallic noise they make. Makes me feel safe. What the hell was that? Was that the fire escape? Maybe we should think this through. Although, I bet it's not as frightening as old Marconi's hairy vein. Or maybe it is. Judging by that noise, I'd say there's some scary-ass creature in that alley. Whoa, whoa, seriously. I'm relatively too young to die. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna die here. But at least I will look death in the eye and say, I'm not afraid of you! this over a stupid filthy cat well that's embarrassing luckily no one saw me except for the cat and mrs. Grozer of course I'm afraid to touch her what if she turns out to be a ghost <laughs> looks like mrs. Grozer finds my adventure really thrilling she's not even blinking that's mrs. Grozer's plant looks nice man that cat sounds just like Matt when he retches. Wonder if it too drank a case and a half of beer. Meow? Meow? <coughs> Phew, perfect. I got rid of that stinking cat and now the coast is clear. Things are looking up. You're cursed. Huh? You're cursed. Um, what now? Cursed. Cursed? So that wasn't my imagination after all. You're cursed. Aw, oh, man. Was that you in my ear all night? I had a hell of a night because of you. Worst night since I ate that three-year-old jar of mayonnaise. Wait till I get down there. Curse. That does it. No one curses Randall. Bye-bye, Mrs. Grozer. Say hi to Mr. Grozer. You're cursed. Shit. What are the odds? Whew, that was close. I feel like I'm going to puke my heart out. Whew. This must be what freedom tastes like. You're cursed! Easy, easy. I haven't forgotten about you. Let me just check and make sure everything is where it should be, then I'll decide whether to face you or get the hell out of here. Just after I throw a rock at your face or something. So, you're a bum, huh? And who are you? What? You don't even know I'm the victim of your nighttime screaming? I think you're mistaken. The cat went that way. 
You're the one I'm looking for, bum. Your days of cursing people are over. Wrong <laughs> again! I am no bum. Of course you are. And with an obvious drinking problem, I'd say. Boy, you couldn't be more wrong. I'm a businessman, and I only drink energy drinks. Oh, well excuse me, Gordon Gecko. I didn't know this was your office. Be careful when you get out onto the street. You don't want that nice suit getting dirty. Aw, oh, low blow, kid. Running a business is no walk in the park, you know. If you want to be someone in life, you gotta start at the bottom. Yeah, well you got the edge there, because this is rock bottom. Besides, everybody knows drunk people always tell the truth. So if you say I'm a drunk bum that says he's not a bum, but really he is, wouldn't that be paradoxical, Mr. Smiley Pants? Well, let's see. You dress like a bum, you smell like a bum, and nothing you say makes any sense. Okay, maybe I'm a business bum. Are you interested in a retching cat? Oh boy, poor old man. The alcohol's pickled your brain. Listen, your problem is that you haven't been with a girl in a long time, if ever. Am I right? Listen, bum, I've got two words for you. Shut the fuck up. They say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, but what of the man who possesses too much knowledge? Well, he won't end up living in an alley, that's for sure. So where did you learn that saying anyway? On a TV show or something? No. You mean yes? No. Oh, really? Because I think I heard that one on the scary door last week. I said no. Us bums don't watch sci-fi shows. Aha! <laughs> you just gave yourself away, old man. No. I don't think so. Okay, whatever. Take care, old man, and stay out of trouble. You don't want to end up getting grounded. We'll meet again. Can't wait. You're cursed! Well, you can't deny it now. You just said it. I heard you. Said what? Why are you torturing me like this? I didn't do anything. Not yet, but you will. Oh, God, I know you're kind. I have my own problems, too, you know. My boss and my landlord are boneheads, and they're both pissed at me. And if I don't deal with them soon, I might end up living down here with you. If knowledge is power and power corrupts, how will humankind ever survive? Oh, my God, those lame sayings again, really? Aren't you supposed to pay a copyright on them or something? Not me. Okay, great. So in summary, you're a bum and I'm cursed. Yes. Aha! Didn't you say you knew nothing about it? That was just an opinion. I think you're cursed and I can help you. You can help me? <laughs> That's a laugh. I went to school for seven years. I'm no dummy. Clearly. Welp. I thought I could be of help. Look, I can take care of myself, like Gordon Freeman. I don't know that Freeman guy, but here, take my card, boy. Give me a call if you change your mind. This? This is a rusty old razor blade, and there's no number on it. Well, you could always find something useful in the trash. I'm done rummaging through my neighbor's waste for today. Hey, it's a little chihuahua. Hmm, his name is on the collar. I think it's Barkley. Come here, boy. Come on. Come to daddy. Eh, he's not paying me any attention. I don't rummage through garbage anymore. What's wrong, buddy? You look pretty bummed. Oh, it's a mess. I'm working for less than slave wages, working on my day off. I have to deal with every backward ass fuck on the planet, and I'll get fired if I don't make a sale before the weekend. Hey, hey! Would you be interested in purchasing a set of Wondermatic products? 
We use the most state-of-the-art technology. No, hey, sorry, I'm not interested. Listen, I'm late for work and I'm really not into listening to complete strangers whining. As far as actually helping them, well, mm-mm. Uh, I see. Well, okay then, well, have a nice day. Oh, look at those puppy dog eyes. Now I feel sorry for them. Ah, crap. Looks like it's out of service. Eh, it's just a trash can. I don't think there's anything interesting in there. The mother of all portable consoles. Ah, I better not do that. This thing has already stole my childhood and half my adolescence. One pass, please. Aha, uh -huh. six letters down. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of in a rush here. I'm late for work, you know? Three letters across, farm animal. Oh my god, excuse me. Can I get a pass, please? <sighs> One moment, please. I'll be with you in a second, sir. Just please stay on the line. Did she just say stay on the line? A pass for the subway! A pass! I'll be with you in a second, sir. Please stay on the line. Your call is very important to us. Oh, great. So this is one of those days, huh? God, I'm not even supposed to be at work today. Oh, well, I guess I am, but I don't feel like it. All I want is a damn pass. of electronic devices and biological matter. Six letters. What? Let's see. Eleven letters down. It starts with I. Inadequate to or unsuitable for a particular purpose. Thank you for calling and sorry for any inconvenience. Hey, hey, hold on. Don't you hang up on me. Don't you dare hang up on me. She hung up. That cow hung up on me. Cow. Five across, three letters, farm animal. Thank you. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Do you know if this glass is bulletproof? It isn't? I just wanted to know if it would be possible to break in with a heavy, blunt implement. Oh, no, no. Please, don't be afraid of me. What kind of man do you take me for? All I'll do is rip your head off and make sure you're not a cyborg sent from the future to fuck me over. Cyborg. Six letters down. A combination of electronic devices and biological matter. Thanks. So that's how you want to play it, huh? Okay. Last chance. Give me my pass now and there'll be no consequences. Is that your final word? Fine. You're on my list now. Right below Lucas and Jar Jar. And if you ever get a letter bomb, just be sure to remember the name Randall Hicks. Wait, no. Don't remember that name. Scratch that. I don't appreciate your ruse, ma'am. Your call is very important to us. What call? There's no call. Please stay on the line. Kill me. Oh my god, kill me now. You know what? I'm out of here. You break my heart. There you go. If I want that to work, I should probably lift the earpiece first, right?
Well, 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 what do we have here? Aren't you a little old to be jumping the gate? Listen, it's not what you think. Ah, oh, they always say that. It's not. Listen to me, Officer... Officer Murray. To protect and serve, I know your kind. Do you think you can get yourself out of this by playing dumb? Well, why did you try to sneak in without paying? Ah, uh, it's not my fault. That lady from the box office... Uh, uh, come on, she's not exactly employee of the month, that hag. You mean Betty? Yeah, that monster, that fat sea hag Betty. She totally ignored me. She ignored me like Jessica Chabot ignores my emails. Uh, oh, uh, anyway, yeah, it was Betty. Ah, Betty. I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. Anyway, that doesn't excuse your behavior. You can't go anywhere until I finish the report. Oh, great. Don't tell me I have to wait for Murray to learn how to read. No way! I need to get out of here right now. If I don't make it to work today, my boss is gonna freak out on me. Not so fast, boy. I said you can't leave until I'm done with your report. And I'm pretty clumsy and dyslexic when it comes to paperwork, so it'll be a while yet. But I'm late for work. You were already late, so a few more minutes won't make any difference. Now sit down and shut up. I need to concentrate. Man, I'm gonna be here till midnight. I gotta find a way to get out of here, otherwise I'll lose my job. Holy macaroni! What an impressive globe you have here, Murray. That's my little one. <laughs> I've been to a lot of different countries. A little Murray figure for each of them. Hey there, Mini Murray. You're mine now. Nope, it's not moving. Hmm, maybe with some kind of lubricant? Let's see what happens. Here we go. Hello again. Could I please have my goddamn pass once and for all? Well, I'm not really sure, you little smartass. I didn't think too much of your little glue prank. Listen, lady, I gotta go to work, and I don't think this is something that requires a police officer's intervention, right? Ah, <sighs> Fine. Here's your stupid pass. Now scram! Yes! Randall wins. Not gonna break the shop window. Good morning, Vietnam! Well, look who's here. My star employee. My right-hand man. My lucky charm who seems to feel the need to remain incognito. Sometimes I wonder, when will he next grace us with his presence? Oh, please, let's not go through that again. You're upset because I'm always late. I can understand that. But it's all down to my orientation problems. In fact, I thought this was my North Vietnamese friend's bird shop. Ah, cut the crap, Hicks! 
Even my beloved ex-wife would be better at this job than you. It's almost midday, and this package should have been delivered to the annual koala convention hours ago. I have called you like five times, and this foreign guy who doesn't even speak English always picks up. And I always end up insulting him in all the languages I know. God knows I have been more than patient with you, Hicks! That's true, but spare me a little more of your patience and I might just surprise you. For example, that foreign guy you mentioned is Hong. Surprised? Who Hong? Who the hell is Hong? Hong who? My Asian friend, you know, the guy from the bird shop. See, I gave him my business cell phone and in exchange I got a cage full of pigeons. Then I used the pigeons to shoot a slow motion action scene right down my block. Ah, oh, shut up! Please, don't yell at me like that. My landlord has already yelled at me this morning, and I'm so hungover right now. Oh, that reminds me. I need an advance. Are you serious? I can't believe it. Seriously? Um, didn't I make my, um, serious face? I'm sorry. Oh, where to begin? You remember when I told you to close on Friday night and I gave you the key? Of course I do. I'm a good employee. Hey, if you were, you'd be here before 9 o'clock to open up. God damn it, Hicks, that's the only key. It's my key! And I trusted you with it, even though I know you've been stealing office supplies. That's because I suffer from kleptomania. And honestly, that doesn't have anything to do with our current issue. It's a sickness, and it's rude for you to bring it up. Ah, shut up! Oh, for the love of God, just shut up and give me that key. I'm just getting started here. Well, hmm. I don't think I've seen any keys in my inventory. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now I'm getting the picture. So this is the part where I have to find the key to get the advance and... You lost the damn key? I told you to guard it with your life! And I did. I swear on Super Hot Chick's voluptuous curves. How dare you even speak her name, you vile, shameless pig! Oh, that was way out of line, Mr. Emerson. I could be carrying a tape recorder and sue you, you know? But to be honest, I don't think I've seen a tape recorder in my inventory either. You dare to desecrate my most valued possession. Come on. All this because of a stupid key? What was it, made of platinum or what? Seriously, was it platinum? Because if it was, we have to find it. Forget that damn key! I'm talking about something I keep in my safe, Hicks! You mean that map to Scabs Island? I am talking about a first edition of the official Wonder Comics catalog. Published in 1972 with Super Hot Chick wearing all her classic little numbers. Now all I have left is the cover, which is covered in oil stains and smells like tuna! See? Now that kind of rings a bell. Come on, Mr. Emerson, what do you expect me to do? Another joke about my inventory? As I said on my resume, I'm a man with ambition and I always achieve my goals. A lovable rascal, if you will. If I need something, I take it. And honestly, I needed something to wrap my sandwich in. You can't deny that my complete honesty is another good quality to add to my resume, can you? Well, you'd better start updating that doodle napkin you call a resume, Hicks. You're fired! What? You mean, just like that? What did I do? Get out! Whoa, whoa, come on, wait a second. At least you'll give me some compensation, right? I want my severance pay. You have cost me a lot of money, Hicks. Between the locksmith's bill, new locks, all the stuff you've stolen from the office, including a PC. Ugh, but I told you, I needed to update my blog. It's not right to do that at work. I'm not done yet. Pens, calculators, the key to the office my father gave me on his deathbed. I knew it had some kind of sentimental value. See, I do pay attention. I'm still not done. I knew that too. Toilet paper, ink cartridges, light bulbs. I mean, why would you steal damn light bulbs? Mr. Emerson, allow me to ask you a question. Have you ever felt as if some kind of disturbed maniac was controlling you? Well, I have. I, 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 
So I, I, I needed light bulbs to light up a, uh... I don't care! You are out of control! And wrecking my catalog was really crossing the line, Hicks. Okay, fine. Just try running this business without me. You're still here. So you're really not gonna pay me? You know what, Hicks? I never went to Vietnam. But I took part in the Battle of Mogadishu. And believe me, I saw things there. Well, what a coincidence. That same weekend I spent the whole day killing things in a video game. See? We have something in common. I am seriously considering ripping your heart out, stuffing it into this packet, and mailing it to your mother. Oh, that's it. I quit. I can't work in these conditions. There's just too much hostility. Get the hell out of here! Get out! And don't you ever, ever come back! Okay, okay. Easy, big fella. Hmm. A water cooler. So many refreshing memories. Posters and more posters. Wilson! Ah, the mythical super hot chick. Star of a generation of teenage wet dreams. Truth is, I've never read one of her comics, but her lingerie catalog came in handy when I had to wrap my lunch. Yeah, I wish I worked with a mouthy alcoholic robot. That would be so cool. Posters and more posters. Who knows what kind of dangers lurk down in the sewer? Killer crocodiles, mutant turtles? Hmm, I guess we'll never know. Hmm, a manhole cover. Not covering anything. You can see inside the office from here. Uh, hey, Mr. Emerson, I think we should have a word about the radio incident. Was it really necessary to throw it at my head? Get the hell out of here! Get out! And don't you ever, ever come back! All right, all right, easy. You can see in I don't have a job anymore. Good morning. Good for you. Aloha. What could I pawn so I can get enough money for rent? I kinda need a lot of cash. What have you got? Well... This is an extendable duck hanger. I made it myself. Is it wooden? I have a lot of stainless steel hangers, made by yours truly. This is a genuine subway pass. It allows you to travel freely around the city. Are you serious? Of course I am. I don't need that. Some pages from the 1972 Wonder Comics official catalog, including some pictures of Super Hot Chick in her classic little outfits, and with very few oil and tuna stains. Uh, I don't think those are worth anything in that condition. This awesome police officer figure? Uh, it's not as if it's Captain Red or anything. This great fake leather wallet that doesn't smell like wet dog? Yeah, I can smell it from here. Not interested. That ring, though. Hey, hold it. I don't remember giving you permission to sniff around my inventory. Easy, kid. It kind of comes with the territory. Well, that ring isn't exactly mine. I just wouldn't feel comfortable selling it because, you know, it... Let me get this straight. 
that's the only thing you have that's actually worth something and you don't want to sell it? Well, I mean, it's just that it, it, it's... You know, I think I'd better keep it. I, I know it's none of my business, but don't you think that guy might be a criminal? I hope so. Don't you think he might be the kind of guy that, you know, could steal something? I guess. But he's my best supplier. Mel, I just found this in my grandma's old basement. It's of great sentimental value. Wow, that basement's a gold mine. I already have one of them, but I'll give you a nice wad for it. See? I love that guy. Okay, so... I don't think I have any more business here, then. Thanks, anyway. Oh, wait, kid, don't just walk out like that. Why don't you have a good look round your place? Maybe you have some useless junk I might be interested in. It does seem like you really need the money. Finally, it seems like I'm getting better at making faces. I think I know where I can find some junk you might like. I'll check it out. Some frankly magnificent junk. Some frank... An empty bottle. Eh, it's just a gas cylinder. There's nothing mysterious about it. That's the base. You're supposed to put stuff on it. A wind-up clock. It stopped. Some frankly magnificent junk. Man, they have all kinds of crap in here. It's a stack of mercury cola. Wasn't that taken off the market for safety reasons? That trash is worth its weight in gold, I'm sure. I just want to take it and go fry the Scaleri brothers, but I better not. Mr. Strife Sword? I guess he won't be needing it anymore. Oh, great. Just great. How the hell am I gonna pay the rent now? I gotta find a way to make some cash. God damn it, Phil! What'd you do that for? You're such a grudge holder. A couple of pieces are out of place. A small spring. That's a rather big nut. 